So I've been futzing around on the patio because it is a nice sunny day and it is quite breezy. But what caught my attention this morning, and I thought, you know what, let's talk. <laughs> what caught my attention this morning was that yesterday I watered all the Rapiculus lalias, flushed them all through and other orchids as well, which we'll get to just now. I had to do that because the rain didn't come. However, this morning, I didn't appreciate how wet they were still staying. So around the bases, I've been removing moss. And then of course, the next thought on my mind was, wow, salt build up. So I'm removing media from the surface, if you have this in your pot. What I do is just remove the media from the surface that has salt buildup on it. This can happen for several reasons, and I figured I would just chat with you about all of that. So during the winter months, I don't do much fertilizing. I'm very, very careful. But with Rapiculus lalias, it's a little bit different because most of them are in active growth during the cooler months of the year, so they get supported. It's the ones that are not an active growth that they seem to leach up any of the residual salt in the media. Sorry for the jiggle. They leach up any residual salt in the media throughout the months when watering is very, very sparse. Usually during the summer, I mist and mist and mist, and that keeps all the salt buildup at bay. This is also an indicator that I don't need to be so aggressive. <laughs> in adverted commas with by fertilizing for Rapiculus lelia because they really don't need much. But of course you want to support them. So the ones that don't do anything during the winter, they get more salt buildup. Now, while this piece of lava rock was at the edge out here, what I'm also doing is removing excess lava rock because as roots grow, the orchids are filling their pot, making it a wonderful recycling way of getting your media back, seeing as they don't need to be covered in media. I mean, you know, where they live, they can be on their rocks, they can do their thing. But I can recycle this media now, seeing as it's kind of done its job. And even though there's one like stuck in here, it's stuck on a root. So a little bit of two things happening here today. Removing moss from the base, but my main concern is avoiding any of the salt accumulation that was on the media to be anywhere near where new roots will grow. But I also have to be mindful that these roots are accustomed to moss, so I don't want to go too mad at exposing everything and just cover them up again, but also allow for some aeration around the pseudobulbs. You see this piece of media doesn't have salt on it at all. I'm taking it out anyway because it's raising up higher in the pot. The idea being I don't want anything to be in the way when new growths come. Also, removing moss right now seems to have exploded in the past two weeks. I faintly remember doing this a couple of weeks ago and I'm doing it again. But removing moss right now for me is important because it, as you can tell, it's growing really, really fast in between the joints here, in between all the structures. Don't want anything rotting out. A better example may be the next one I'm going to show you. Hello, by the way. <laughs> you see how impromptu this was? <laughs> I'm just like, yapping away because I'm still, I'm still doing what I'm doing. Let me get this one dealt with. Something like that, get my media back. Which of course I will wash, sterilize, boil, and then sort out again. It'd be nice to get Baloo's hair out as well, but still. Okay, so you see, as new roots come, I don't want them touching any salt media. Let me qualify that. I don't want them touching any media with salt on it. <laughs> <laughs> Dyslexic tendencies coming through here thick and fast. Switching the words around changes the meaning of it. My media is not salt. <laughs> so you see here on my Regina, this is what I'm mindful of right here. 
These are old pseudobulbs. They don't have roots on them, but the moss is very, very quick to grow up in and around. And you can see the media right here. That's all white at the surface. Granted, some of these are also faded bits of media, but you know what? It's all coming off because in some instances, there's also salt on the moss. So that's all coming off. I'm not trying to expose all the ceramics. I can't be flushing aggressively at this point in time. And some of these orchids are now starting their roots. So the easiest trick in my book is to get rid of what is unsightly looking and what poses a possible threat. This way, giving me the opportunity to recycle as well. And I already have my little container here with RO water in it because what I'm trying to do is get as little salt back into the media as I'm leaching the old stuff out. So I want that gone. And I don't mind moss in the corner, but you see in the back here, I didn't like seeing all of this. I mean, this is sunburn, this is sunburn, but I didn't like seeing all of this black at the base. Nothing is squishy, soft, nothing looks untoward. The orchid is not well rooted in, just with the front two growths here. So with a little bit of a breeze today, I'm just gonna try and get ahead of the game. You see, I already took this one off because it was pretty salty at the surface. But I need to protect those roots because you can see how wet they are and they have been accustomed to being buried. I just want to make sure that whatever I remove, where I remove it, that everything is somewhat equaled out by putting it back so that the roots themselves don't struggle. So yeah, over fertilizing, one reason for salt buildup, low humidity, Another reason for salt buildup doesn't mean you're over fertilizing. It just means that the environment is drying out whatever you put into your pots faster than what is actually being absorbed by the orchids. So just check your humidity levels. If you believe that you're fertilizing at the correct levels, then it could be that your humidity is too dry. In my environment, I have super dry humidity. So for these guys who don't grow during the winter and I don't fertilize, it's residual salts from the previous season moving their way up bit by bit as the pot starts to dry out. Now, because this is a semi-hydro setup, I do maintain my media somewhat damp during the winter months. Not wet, but damp. So there's always wicking going on in the pot, whether I fertilize or not. And that is why I'm seeing this happening this time of year. Nothing that can't be fixed quickly without having to unpot the orchid. So this is making me feel a little bit more comfortable. Even if I lose a pseudobulb, at least I don't lose the main structure of the orchid and she won't go downhill. We can move on to the Lekka examples now because they are more predominant and I can futz around with my Rapiculus lalias afterwards. Let's have a look at some orchids we haven't seen in a very, very long time and they haven't been outside for a very, very long time either. And yet in self-watering, they also needed water and look at the results of those. Whoops, before I forget, this is Lelia Flava Solina. Look, you see all that? Now, she has had a little bit of fertilizer during the winter months because she was in active growth but so little that the growths didn't even grow to size you see how conservative i was and yet look at all the salt build up here well if you grow orchids outdoors you will have things like birds around you or other creatures that leave their droppings so be very careful with regards to yeah well my orchids live outdoors i'm not fertilizing them the bird droppings are also a reason for salt accumulation because as you can see by the minute growths that I did manage to grow, I wasn't fertilizing this orchid pretty much at all. But this stuff is potent and it's hot for little lalias like this. Now, whatever has dissolved and gone into the pot, that is fine. This is pretty much how nature would work as well. But nature, the water would be a runoff water and everything would dry out pretty quickly. 
in a pot. That doesn't happen. It is somewhat absorbed into the media. And the only runoff there is, is if I flush, which I don't do that much during the winter months, because sometimes where these guys come from, their winter months are dry. So they do grow their structures during a period where in cultivation, it is very, very difficult to replicate the conditions in order for them to grow well without all the salt buildup happening because nature does its thing. Unfortunately, it's far too much. And this is the result. Check your little creatures. See how busy they've been in and around your pots. And if needs must, again, remove the surface of the media. And now I'll get to the Lekka ones and I can finish this off once I've shown you the orchids in Lekka. This is the Potinara I got from Fernanda Nathimento Orchids and Succulents. She's doing quite well in Lekka and self-watering. I got her in 2021, has not bloomed for me yet, but you can see the exorbitant amount of salt built up on the top. Now, you can also see how it's affected some of the roots. I would have to make sure to know whether these are roots that died because of the salt or if they were there before and they didn't make it from the transition into the organic media that this orchid was accustomed to as opposed to the inorganic leka and self-watering system that I have. Either way, it doesn't matter. The orchid is rooted in. Don't have to worry about whatever's going on at the top with regards to the roots anymore, thankfully, because otherwise we would have problems. But you see, all that salt buildup from the winter of no fertilizer. That is all the residue that comes up while the pot is still damp because the setup requires it. So all I'm doing is taking off the salty medium off the surface. And if I have to do this another time during the season, then that's fantastic. That's fine because this is a simple, easy fix. I could now think about flushing and more flushing, but unless you have a very high humidity. The flushing is not going to deal with the salt buildup on the surface. I have also heard, read, seen that soaking a pot in Epsom salts will bind the salts and flush the pot out. In all the years that I have tried to do that, and when I say that, that was before my channel actually posted any videos. I was in 18 and 19. That Epsom salt trick did not work for me at all. I still had residue. I still had the watermarks. Nothing flushed out. Nothing got clean. So I'm not wasting product. I'm not going to put my roots into an environment that at this point in time is not good for them either because it's far too soon. However, I do want to maintain a healthy climate in the pot. So I'm not going to be Epsom salt soaking anything, and I haven't for years unless I'm correcting magnesium. But Epsom salts to flush out excess minerals, I don't do that anymore. It hasn't worked for me. The surface always remains salty. That's what happens when you have a porous material. It can also happen with bark. The easiest thing for me to do, safest thing, I feel more comfortable in doing it this way, is to remove the salty bits and then if I have to I can replace with clean fresh media and also then check my fertilizing as the next season progresses and then learn a bit more about the orchid as she stays longer in my collection hopefully does well because nothing is ever guaranteed but this is all part and parcel of how I get to know my orchids. So 2021, I got this orchid. 2022, I was fertilizing normally during the growing season. And then now we're in 2023. I have the next season with her. So the winter months have proven that either there was too much fertilizer going in during the summer of 2022, which then started to leach out during the winter because I keep my pots damp, or the leka could also have been of the old kind. Now, this is something I doubt very much because I have had my leka now over three, four years. My oldest leka I have had for at least four years, and it has either been in a pot or it's been leaching in its container covered in water. 
So this is not a reason of old lecker leaching its own salts. But that is another reason. If everything is well dialed in, your humidity is fine, it's not drying out your pots, but your media isn't leached properly, then eventually the salt buildup will happen in your pots, C or C, because the media itself needed a much longer period of leaching out its own salts. And keep that in mind as well when you buy fresh lecker that you plan well in advance when it comes to using your lecker your new lecker, that you just don't use it in pots straight away. So I have just bought a new bag of lecker a couple of weeks ago, and my first reading of the pH was an atrocious pH of 11. Very, very surprising. My long-term, long-standing lecker is at the 6.57 pH. That is my oldest lecker that's been recycled, reused. My new bag is showing up completely different results. So every week I just take out the water, I change the water up with fresh RO water, and I then measure again, and I have now reduced that pH to 8, which would be acceptable for orchid pots. So this would be how I take care of excess salts on a pot, and then, you know, flushing can commence as per usual. So now we have the same situation with my Yin's Black Eagle. You can see that. Now, this is a mixture of very, very old lecker. But back then, when I received my orchids, my lecker wasn't leached long enough. So you can see, now we have an example of super old lecker in my collection. The orchid went into the pot and this is leaching from the excess salts of the leka itself from not having had a long time soaking leaching out its own salts. I hope all that makes sense. So I'm going to take care of this pot as well. Meanwhile, this orchid needs to be repotted this season. She's on the rota for a repot and a cleanup. But until I get to that point, I am not comfortable with leaving her as she is. I do want some moss, but you can also see that the birds have been in my grow space. This is salt buildup from the birdies. Okay, now it's affected this root, so we can actually snip that off, but I'll do that off camera. This is about salt buildup, and you can see how bad it is. Back in the day, I also had my lecker all mixed up, large, small, medium, I didn't separate my Lekka back then. So you can see that what I've got out of this one, look at the size differences in the Lekka. All these things are a sign for me as to what is going on and why the Lekka is doing what it's doing because in the years that I've had it, I've been also only fertilizing this orchid very sparingly. And we're losing that root right there. But we'll address all that on the repot been fertilizing very sparingly because she's not one of those orchids that grows big structures and grows very, very fast. Besides that, she has to deal with my horrible conditions in the winter. So all that added up. But the main reason for this salt buildup, as an example, is this lecker was never, ever allowed to leach for a very, very long time. So let's hope that our Yin's Black Eagle will be okay until we address the root system. Squishy roots, it can happen. It's been in this pot. It'll be five years, going on five years that this orchid has been in this pot. <laughs> now, it's okay to do that with inorganic media. I would not recommend it with organic media, but still. Normally, I like to address my pots every two, maximum three years. And I've had many exceptions because, yeah, I'm also a little bit chicken to address some orchids that have been in their pot way longer than I would prefer. So yeah, hopefully this season I can address those. Let me show you another orchid and then I'll love and leave you. Quick update on my Colostylus ciliaris variety or steady eye. Look, look, cold damage, cold damage, cold damage, and so on and so forth. What a shame especially on new leads. But I think she's going to be okay because I've already got new growths coming right here. That's the first one that I saw. 
There's an eye bulging right there. This is awesome. So pleased to see this. I cannot tell you because I don't want to lose this orchid, but she cannot handle my cold temperatures in the grow space during the winter, and she has only had extreme low light levels throughout. Now, lots of salt build up on this one, and off camera, what I'm going to do is pick all of this out and then fill out with fresh media again as well, because what I have to be really careful about with this orchid is that she grows her new roots during the hottest and driest month of my year, which is August. You can see that she's a little bit of a climber, so <laughs> I need roots to either hit good, clean, not salty leka, or if they're in the air, at least they have a chance to survive by the time they reach that media. And then there's no way I'm allowed to have any roots burn. I need them in the pot quickly. And sometimes I make a little mountain of leka just to help them along. But uh, usually I just, you know, do a lot of misting during that time of year. I also have quite a bit of moss here that I would like to address because I have another new growth right there. It's, this orchid is not living outside just yet. Maybe in another week she will go outside, but I now have to protect every new growth that is coming out and the roots that are hopefully to come with it because this orchid needs to regain her strength before the next challenge happens, which is winter of 23-24. So you see this? This is media burn, low humidity, all that horrible stuff that an orchid should not be subjected to at all. And that is why this has to go, all of it. And I can do that off camera, but we haven't seen this orchid for a long time. So I'll be cleaning her up, finishing that off, and replacing with fresh lecker all around the surface. I can already see I've lost some roots over here. I hope I haven't lost the growth, but look at the wrinkles on this growth. Yeah, there's rot down here. There's raw hot. You see that? She gone, she gone. But I have a new growth right there. So I may... No, I was just contemplating to cut this out. No, I'm gonna let her do her thing. I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. What a shame. That's the latest growth from last year. Didn't make it. Oh well, on the road to discovery, you and I, here we are. Okay, so back to the salt. I'm getting distracted because that was, that's not nice. But I'm glad that I saw it now. At least I can keep an eye on what's going on there. <clears throat> right, but you know what? I'm gonna leave you on a positive note. Changed my mind. I thought this would be the last orchid we would look at, but I've changed my mind because I also have to address the pot of my Renanthera citrina. You can see there's a little bit of salt wicking up here, which I can't change anymore. These are very, very old roots, but removing that salty media, if she decides to maybe extend this root, I would like to guide it into the pot. Don't want any salt around at that point in time, but here we go. Here's what's going on up. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to raise you up just a tad. Sorry for the jiggles. There we go. Check this out. I woke up this morning too her spike starting. And I just thought, you know what? Have a look at the citrina. Surely something's going on there because her bloom season is coming up end of April, beginning of May. And I was, yes, gotta know your orchids, gotta love your orchids because then you can wake up to supplies. There we go. Keeping my fingers crossed, I don't do any harm to her. So yeah, keep your salt in check at the surface of the media. It's not always you over fertilizing. The elements can play a role as well. Climate, it's not just over fertilizing, but it's an easy fix without having to disturb your orchid. Just put fresh media on top and that also goes for organic media. So I appreciate if you've watched this video, impromptu, spontaneous, beautiful in the sunshine here. I get to play with my orchids and I thought, dang, get the camera out and have a jibber-jabber about salt accumulation and protect your roots and 
leech your new lecker for as long as possible when you plan ahead and buy media. Don't think you can just dust it off and put it in a pot, no matter how good the quality is, okay? Lecker is all produced the same way and there is stuff in it from jump that you don't want to have resurfacing at some point in time doing damage to your orchids. Hope this was helpful. Hope you enjoyed a little bit of sun, a little bit of orchids here in southern Spain. If you did, give it a like. I appreciate that very, very much. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, huh, you might want to do so because Vernanthera citrina in bloom is a beautiful sight. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. Thank you for your time. Your support is appreciated. Wishing you a wonderful day on that one condition, though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.